Hey there, folks. Welcome to the opening session of the of our run of The Between by Jason Cordova. Um, the Between is a game of uh, Victorian horror uh, in about uh, a vict of erotic Victorian horror. Let's say that. Uh, sorry. That that also seems that also seems it, it is a game of Victorian horror that explores uh, themes of of uh, forbidden uh, romance uh, and eroticism, uh, ten, uh, class tensions, and and the violence of, of the Victorian age within uh, London. It's very heavily inspired by uh, the series Penny Dreadful. Uh, you'll probably see some uh, parallels in some of the playbooks people pick up to to sort of the these kinds of archetypical characters that uh, within that. Um, it's also kind of heavily inspired by a lot of the Victorian horror uh, more generally. And uh, yeah, I, I have had a lot of fun playing in it. This is my first time running it. Uh, before we jump in on things and go any further, I'm wondering if we could do a round of introductions. Uh, we'll start with myself, and I, it always confuses me if Zoom, if everybody sees the same order in Zoom, but we'll go Ben, David, Brandon. Uh, I'm Steven, he, him. I am GMing this run. Uh, I, as I said, I haven't, I've, I've played a lot of the between, but this is my first time running it. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, if we could continue on to you, Ben, if you want to introduce yourself, your pronouns, anything you want to say. Hi, my name is Ben Bisonier, he, him. I, uh, am a LARP designer and I'm in America for the first time in three years, uh, this month. And I'm meeting my new sisters, which are like a, a, a clutch of hens. Um, so I, I'm feeding them and they, they're like, they're, they're, they're babbling, they're bah, 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 everywhere. And I'm just like, it's just giving me life. Uh, at the same time, I'm building a barn with my father. So I am feeling like a prodigal son. Thank you. I'm excited to play with everyone, really. Uh, hi, I'm uh, David, you see him pronouns. Um, yeah, I have both played and run uh, The Between before. Um, I've also done a bit of writing for it. Um, uh, some of the some of the unseens in the book itself and a few of the other uh, threats out there. So um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. This I've not played with this um, with this mastermind before we're going to be uh, um, playing with. Uh, spoilers ahead for what's going to come. Um, but uh, yeah, so so no, I'm really looking forward to to seeing that, seeing what what um, what threats we get, and uh, playing with this great group. Hello, I'm Brandon. He, um, I, I played the between before on a couple of occasions, and um, uh, other than that, I, uh, um, I'm have a. Uh, putting up a stage show on October the 1st of Starship Edsel, which is the worst ship in Starfleet, based upon a LARP that I wrote many years ago and being brought to life as a semi-scripted uh, show at the Other World Theater here in Chicago and uh, to be live streaming and available afterwards on YouTube. Great, thank you everyone. This game is hosted through The Gauntlet. The Gauntlet is an online gaming community, mostly focusing on role-playing games of the Indian OSR varieties. Besides publishing a zine called The Codex, it also puts out several podcasts about role-playing games. And of course, it organizes a gaming calendar, which this and many other games are organized through every month. The calendar is open to non-members, so feel free to jump on over there through the link below if you're interested in playing with any of the folks here tonight or any of the other people on the gauntlet. All gauntlet games make use of an open door policy. We are all here to have fun, and if something happens in real life where you become comfortable at the table, feel free to step away as long as you need. No will hold it against you, and you are free to return whenever you feel ready. If you're able to let the group know if and when you expect to return, that would be uh, helpful. Uh, but for the rest of us in terms of framing scenes, but we understand sometimes emergencies happen and it's not always possible. 
Uh, besides uh, the open door, we also make use of a couple other safety tools, which I won't get into too much detail in because uh, most of the group here are longtime golf players and know them all fairly well. But we make use of the X card. If you ever uh, are uncomfortable at the table and need to excise something from the fiction, feel free to make an X sign with your hands. Uh, say X card, type X in the chat. We'll probably ask what is being X carded. Uh, but uh, but 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 we'll take step and we'll take steps to remove it from the fiction. Uh, besides that, we are also making use of lines and veils. Lines and veils is a living document we put together before play begins and check in on regularly uh, to make certain it is kept up to date. Uh, basically, it is a set of uh, particular topics, safety wise that we want to pay particular attention to uh, to make certain that everyone at the table is comfortable. Um, and then finally, we're also making use of script change. Script change is a set of terms we use that is derived from um, kind of video editing um, to help us talk about the fiction as we play. Does anyone here have any particular questions about any of these safety tools that they wanted to bring up or, or, or clarify before we started? Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, with a uh, script change, I've often often use it like a, like a fast forward or like like let's take a step back. Is that is that what you mean by fix, uh, script change in this? Um... Yeah, fast forward. Uh, like when you say step back, I sometimes think of a pause. Like yeah. pauses. Yeah. Like let's let's stop a sec. Let's check in with everyone. Figure out what's happening here and make certain we're all happy with where the fiction's going. I've sometimes even caused pause when I was not personally uncomfortable, but I still wanted to say like, oh, this, this could actually be uncomfortable for other people at the table, what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna call pause on myself and just say, is everyone okay with what I'm doing right now? Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, so yeah, um, to what we kind of do, uh, let's jump into things. If everyone could take a look at our hunters tab, I'm wondering um, what, I, I know we've discussed a little bit before um, via email what folks were interested in, but I'm wondering uh, what are people kind of drawn to? Um, personally, I'm quite interested in the legacy. Um, there's definitely a few of the other playbooks that I've not had a chance to play yet that I would also be, be um, uh, more than happy to play, but I think the legacy is kind of top of my, my billing at the minute. I think um, the Undeniable is the one I'm most interested in doing right now. Cool. I was thinking of playing a custom playbook that I made like it was maybe my first or second it was called the pride which is like a sentient uh a hive mind of cats um uh, it's like uh, teen uh you know sabrina the teenage witch her cat you know that's kind of like the idea it's pretty wild but it looks like fun yeah it looks interesting um i'm i'm definitely cool with it like it would definitely like I think if, if we had a mother in the group, I would say like, let's talk about how the mother keeps their skepticism around this hive mind of cats. Um, <laughs> They're just it's, cats. It's because, yeah. It's because it's the, the, the mastermind, you know, it's like that we're yeah. going to have. Like I was thinking, oh, this might be like great for the tone of this campaign. Exactly, yeah. That's, it sounds really cool for this campaign. Um, cool, now that we kind of have some of our characters starting to get fleshed out, uh, something I wanted to start in on is our personal quarters. For now, at least, every all of the members of our group make their home to one degree or another in Hargrave House. Something has brought them here, but we don't know yet what of their past has has drawn them to the uh, to to being here at Hargrave House. And all of them have a court a quarters here, a personal quarters here that that they uh that they that is theirs and among them are a set of effects um things that they have brought with them that are important to them for one reason or another that uh are kept in it that, that that they have with them and 
So what we're going to do is we'll go through introducing each character and then we will, uh, each of us, take a turn um, naming a thing that can be found in that character's personal quarters. And this can be something that uh, is tantalizing and weird. It can be something that you feel like, oh yes, they should obviously have one of these. The mechanical thing of these items is that we can mark them as play goes in, either by invoking them or by using them to get advantage on a roll or to cancel out disadvantage. So Brandon, would you like to introduce us to your undeniable? Um, the Countess Annalisa von Thorn um, is uh, a woman in her, seems to be in her early thirties who um, speaks with a faint German accent uh, as someone who grew up there, but learned English fluently at a relatively young age. Um, she is, uh, she is extraordinarily beautiful as the undeniable always is. Um, uh, but it is more than her physical looks. There is a magnetism about her that makes people uh, want to be with her. And indeed, of course, uh, behind the scenes, there is a cult that is devoted to her. Um, she uh, disclaims exactly where she's from. Um, uh, simply saying the continent. Uh, and um, there is, uh, with something that some will know, there is a cathedral somewhere in London that um, I don't, uh, that is uh, subtly dedicated to a worship. It is a Christian cathedral, but it is also. Um, a pagan temple devoted to her and the artwork and iconography there emphasizes thorns on roses and Christ crowns in very natural ways, but just every, some of it is, is very spiky. And it's also in a uh, sort of a um, early master's way, much of it is lush and sensual bordering on, but never quite crossing the line of the erotic. Um, she uh, has a um, the move I have taken for her in addition to the 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 masterwork which describes her beauty and which degrades in lieu of her doing so is that uh, her beauty is eternal. She does not stay marked or scarred physically. Uh, for very long, and when she uses her beauty to get what she wants, um, she rolls with advantage. She um, has a considerable wardrobe of black clothing, um, as she seems to find great comfort in visiting the dying um, and uh, and comforting them. And in doing so, she has uh, a voice that is as beautiful as her figure. Um, sweet and low. Uh, the lullabies that she sings, if one listens very closely, have a certain macabre tinge to them. But they are compelling and beautiful uh, for all of that. Um, she is, uh, she sometimes uh, plays the socialite at gatherings outside of Hargrave House, which is not a good location for such. Um, 
and uh, at such things, it is said that her appetites uh, rival her appearance. Um, and that she has a, her quiet looks uh, belie a hidden ferocity that uh, not everyone knows about. Ooh. Uh, does anyone have an item that are, are in uh, our Countess's uh, personal quarters? I can think of something I may have given her. Please. This also doesn't have to be something you gave her. This is just something that she has. Oh, it can be if something you can, that you it gave. can be something that you gave her. It totally can, can do it. I think it is a like a an anatomically correct heart-shaped locket that when it opens, there's not a picture, but behind the slight uh, glass in case against where a picture might be. It's just somehow still remaining freshly red. It is blood. Um, I think that you have a um, an ornate um, uh, um, what do you call it? Sensor, the, um, you, you know, the, 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 the incense, um, big metal uh, incense um, container. Okay. Um, Countess Annalise, uh, I'm going to give you two options because I, one is a annotated uh, an annotated uh, history of the War of the Roses. Um, another option is a, a purebred dog that you can only see by moonlight. I'm not sure what the breed is, but you can decide. So you can pick between those. With my mind. The Countess, the Countess seems to love the night. I mean, love it as a rebel in it, like um, someone else might go out in the sunlight. She likes to go out in the dark. As if to soak it in for a little while to, uh, and take its coolness with her where she goes. Yeah, I think ooh, to, I think it is the last thing is a bottle of perfume that evokes the sense of lost love. But yes, that is uh are Countess and Elise. So, uh, let's see here. Let Let's go on to Rory, and I'll give we'll give you some time, Kay. Uh, David, do you want to introduce your legacy? Yeah, sure thing. So. Um, the legacy is from um, a long family of monster hunters. Um, Rory McClellan, um, you see him pronouns. Um, he is, um, uh, he's Scottish. Um, his family is likewise Scottish. Um, he is um, usually, um, I was not, not, not always, but his, his kind of, casual wear does tend to be kind of a, a loose fitting white shirt with a highland style kilt with, with the one that goes over the the shoulder um as as well as um as, as sort of acting as a skirt um uh 
he also carries or he doesn't always carry with him but certainly when he's out on the hunt um he has a a long claymore um a long two-handed sword um that uh is his primary weapon and also um uh, uh skin do the um the, the the short bladed knife um either hidden about his person or worn in the top of his sock um as is traditional um depending on the thing he he, he may, may also sort of wears kind of bright colored tweed suits if he's going in, into a more sort of um uh you know um man about town sort of uh um sort of uh, vibe um his um his vice is uh sex with strangers um he uh moves wise his 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 moves are pretty set um I'll, I'll kind of explain them briefly um so essentially um he carries a um uh hereditary weaponry uh as mentioned the claimer and the skin do um and um he is focused on on saying beasts so um uses vitality when fighting supernatural creatures rather than um sensitivity um uh the um the other move that he has is there is a, uh, a beast that um he is tracking or is tracking him um and essentially um i'll be making some notes on the beast in the background um uh which which will be revealed in time um based on various things um i i have a track where i mark x's and o's um essentially i think it's x's for violence and o's for mercy though i might have that the, the wrong way around um uh and either when i resolve threats or or just like get up to things in the scenes um i can be asked to mark an x or an o um on uh, as as appropriate um and yeah i think that is rory Cool. Does anyone have a uh, object that can be found in Rory's personal quarters at Hargrave House? Um, um, a bottle of 150-year-old Scottish whiskey from a brewery that no longer exists. And probably hasn't for a century. can adapt. Brilliant, cheers. I think you simply have a very intricate old coin that is uh, Taliesin's version of an IOU. Like a ton team marker. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I was thinking similarly of an IOU. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Gotta be yeah. quick. Gotta be quick off the mark here. I know. Um, I was thinking like a, a. Um. Okay. Let me consider something else, Stephen. If you have something. Um, a set of straps and manacles for hunting. Of course. Of course. Um, Remember, they can also be things that you wouldn't necessarily carry around with you, but uh, might be decorating the room. That's true. I think that um, uh, Rory has um, underneath Rory's bed, if Rory does have a bed, is is a is a trunk, a very um, with a series of locks, 
a pattern of which only uh, he knows how to uh, un unbind or unlock. And the wood does not smell, or it's, it's unidentifiable. It smells somewhat like, um, like a deep cologne, or it's, it smells of like the exotic woods of, of the southern uh, rainforests in like Brazil. Awesome, I like that. Cool, and Ben, if you want to introduce us to your pride. Hello, um, my name is uh, Kazoku. Uh, I am a, well, I'll just, I'll just read the description. Uh, some families are born of the same litter, not yours. As a hive mind, your family is a cat's cradle of runts who needed protection when life bared its fangs. When pressed to describe how this all began, cats got your tongue. Memories seem to flee from you like the rodents of Belgrave Square. What you do know for sure is that this is ephemeral. It is only a matter of time before each life escapes your claws and with them each echoing loneliness and the chill of oblivion beckon ever closer. What does it feel like to lose your sentience? Was yours ever a real family? And who will care for you in the end? Um, so the, I'm uh, basically a series of cats uh, um, of varying types, uh, including uh, a, 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 like a lion or a tiger in, in London Zoo, or just like a giant fat cat that hangs about um, the, uh, Bel Bel uh, our house, Hargrave House. Um, his name is Kane. I can introduce them over the course of the campaign. Um, and this is kind of uh, experimental. It's never been played. So anyone has any recommendations, you're free to uh, suggest. Um, but my name is Kazuku. That is the hive name. Uh, they, them. Uh, my uh, vice is brushing up against dangerous people. Uh, and the feature that you know all of these share is knowing eyes and a nicked ear. Uh, I can communicate with all the members of Hargrave House telepathically. Um, and what else? Um, I'll, I'll express my Don questions because I think they're interesting. Uh, did you learn in part the meaning of family? And did I solve a problem in an entirely inhum inhuman way? Um, yeah, so I am still inputting that information into the uh, uh, character keeper, but you can find uh, the playbook if you click on the, the name of the playbook at the top. Um, what else? I think you can, you can find like me just waiting for you, you know? Um, Sometimes I'm like a cat and sometimes an entirely human. Like I'm like trying to make stuff on the stove. Um, I imitate some of you right, in different ways and like learn from you. Um, in, in, in many ways, I'm, I try to be a proper cat. Uh, uh, at least Kane, who's gonna be your, the first one that you meet is a uh, very refined um, and very gentlemanly. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, any questions uh, about, oh, one thing that is true. Um, one of the pride's main abilities is that it's kind of difficult to position the pride making use of personal quarters items. And so um, it, uh, I can just suggest anyone can use any of the pride's personal quarters items if it's, you know, if it makes sense and then I have to mark it. Um, uh, and so don't be restrained to just suggest things only a cat could fit in its mouth. I have my own room. Uh, uh, so whatever you think is there, it's there. I think there is, so these don't necessarily have to be from us, they're just things that are in your quarters. Anything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think there is a rug of an ex made of an extremely large bear that Kane claims is his finest kill. <laughs> uh, 
like just like one of those big bearskin rugs with the head and everything. Um, I think there is a pile of chewed up documents that is nice to sleep on. You don't, you've never really cared much. The, I mean, they have printing on them, but you know, that's never been important. Um, no, I think uh, a similar, though I feel distinct enough, um, uh, suggestion from me, which is um, a very, very tall bookcase um, stuffed with with books, but with, you know, strategic uh, gaps in the books uh, that, where, where, where you can perch. I really enjoyed that all of these are great napping places for cats. <laughs> it's, that's a coincidence. Is that a coincidence? I think not. <laughs> a, it's like, what would a cat have in its room? Broken grandfather clock clawed and haunted by your dead siblings. I thought you were gonna say clawed, clawed and then haunted by mice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel there should be one mouse oriented item, but I, I do like this. I song. was thinking of that, but I I, I I had the idea of something haunted by, by the dead siblings that I wanted. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And Can I say that your room has mouse holes? Has what? Has mouse holes. Oh, yes, of course. They lead into God knows where. You know? We'll throw that one in. That seems like an interesting it's, thing. It's, it's not, it's not, you it's can not add really that to your an, personal quarters. It's not really, an, it's not really a thing, but it's just like, there should be <laughs> mouse holes. It's, it's great. You? Uh, yeah. And uh, finally, Kay, are you at a point where you want to introduce your um, so. uh, vessel? Yeah. So I am playing Duke Tallison Percy of Northumberland. They are our vessel. They have mismatched eyes, a choker with an amber jewel, or uh, if you go down below on our keeper, you will see, as well as red stained lips. They're Vice is sex with dark entities. Then I have chosen to up their sensitivity. Then doop, 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 doop. Uh, their playbook starts with the rites of salt and smoke, which means I'm skilled at contacting dark entities and performing magic rituals. Then I chose a beacon in the dark. Uh, when you walk the streets of London at night, your consciousness spreading across the city like a vast spider web, roll with, sensi roll with sensitivity and you are immediately confronted by a threat or a personified danger related to the threat. And I get to ask them questions and depending on how well I roll, they might stick around or I might just get some answers. Then I have also, where was the other thing? Sorry, this is an expansive playbook. Oh, my Dawn questions. So I'm definitely taking, did you make love with a dark entity because it felt good? And then I'm caught between, did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with a dark entity or did you make love to a human in order to forget the darkness yeah and to clarify for this section um the dawn questions they are not permanent you will be able to change those at the start of every dawn phase oh okay. but this is what you will get mark xp for at the beginning of the next dawn phase we'll say okay. have you answered these questions and then you'll get an opportunity to change them Okay, so yeah, then I'll go with, do you have a face-to-face -face encounter with a dark entity? And then did you make love to a dark entity because it felt good? Oh, mm -hmm. God, this is a dark entity. <laughs> Just casually right there. Easy XP gathering amongst the party. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah. going to say face to face would have to be more than just saying hello to to you. Yes. Oh no, no. <laughs> no. There would have to be an element of danger. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think that's everything. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Well, yeah, I think that that, that takes us through your stuff. Uh, what, what are the elements of your ritual? What did you go with for that? Oh, that one, yes. Uh, I was boring and I said blood. That's okay, it's not boring. I, I think that, I think that uh, someone even wants to taste some blood. So that will be very, uh, uh, it will, it will uh, synergize very well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, let's let's do uh, who who hasn't thought for what uh, our vessel has in their personal hoarders. Uh, 
Oh, it's torn. You can always give me two things. I know. Okay, I know. I know. Um, <laughs> um, what I would leave in your personal quarters is, of course, um, one of my nightgowns. Ooh. It's this incredibly, it's this delicate uh, silk uh, thing, just almost just wispy and insubstantial, meant to enhance more than cover anything. Is it weird if I say we're of a similar enough size that we can both wear it? No. Which makes no sense. Look at the pictures, but I'm going with it. <laughs> um, I think uh, that you have a fairly sizable piece of slate with um, some almost imperceptible, like, words or sigils carved into it, but very difficult to read. I think you have a paint set with a deep and vivid red among them. I think, Kay, that you have a grimoire from the first temple of Jerusalem. Ooh, I love this. This makes my heart very happy. So wondering um, to kind of open up the session. Um, this is something Ben pitched and I think it's uh, useful to kind of open up here. Um, I'm wondering um, as we kind of open a rent on the street on uh, Hargrave House and the streets around it. Uh, how do we pick, how do we uh, kind of, if, if this was the sort of opening sequence of the show, how do we find uh, your character? What are they doing? I, I feel like Ben had some idea in, in his mind, which is why he asked me to, to do this. So do we want to open on you, Ben? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think that, um, Beside Hargrave House is like a, a very wealthy family. Um, it's like seemingly the perfect family. Um, it's like, it's kind of like the Von Trapps, you know, there's many children. Um, they have a, a nanny. Um, there's no mother. Uh, the father has a, a business job involved in the war. And you just see various cats just, um, watching through the windows of that house um and uh you see one uh like there, there seems to be like a knock on the door a very soft knock and one of the children comes to the doors and um they see a small little basket with uh a, 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 a little uh cat with a bell uh it's like a little kitten on it that says Please adopt me. Um, <laughs> uh, like, let, let, uh, take me in, right? And the, oh, it's a child of like four. They take the, the, the little, uh, um, not a rodent, the little feline in. Um, and, uh, you know, they start to go about the day. And uh, the nanny uh, comes and, you know, she consults the father who subsequently says, you know, this is a, a, a family is something that stays together, but it, uh, but outsiders are outsiders and must be left on the streets. <laughs> so he takes the little kitten by the, the scruff of the neck and tosses him into the bushes. Um, and that's the, that's the scene. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's go. I guess reverse character keeper order. Where do we find Rory? Um, I think um, I think we see um, I think we see Rory. Um, 
uh, heading um, heading up the, um, uh, the 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 road towards Hargrove House. Um, he looks like he's not slept or has slept in his clothes if he has um uh um and he is um yeah you know he he just w- walks in in the uh, in the front door um of Hargrove house um uh you know um heads into the um heads into the kitchen um splashes some um some water um in his face and um starts assembling breakfast Cool. And I think that next to that breakfast, you spot a newspaper that has recently been delivered to Hargrave House and brought in by some unknown hand. But something we see something catch your eye. And then I think we will continue on to see uh, what, oh, if people could change their names in our uh, Zoom, that would be great. But let me bring up the characters uh, here. Uh, Percy. Uh, Ta- well, Percy's his surname. Yes. Uh, but if you wish to refer to him, Duke Percy, via his title. What, yeah, what is his, his first name? Uh, Taliesin. Oh, Taliesin. Okay. Taliesin, yeah. Duke Taliesin, Percy of Northumberland. Um, yeah, so I think it's like we get this like camera angle as if you glance to the newspaper and it sort of shuffles in the wind as the wind blows into a, a nearby drawing room where Taliesin is sort of lounging against a chaise, uh, shirt open looking sort of unbothered as he's got a goblet of very dark wine next to him despite the early hours. And in his other hand is clenched uh, a book of indescribable writings. Great. And finally, Countess Annalise, where do we find you? Um, We find Countess Annalise, um, who is riding uh, her horse uh, at a at a at a modest um, at kind of that kind of a pace. Uh, She is riding side saddle. Um, she has a gorgeous uh, riding dress and hat on, and not a thread out of place. Um, the horse makes its way across the uh, the Bugrave Square towards Hargrave House, and then she stops traffic uh, in there uh, as just everyone pauses. She uh, she lingers in front of Hargrave House uh, deliberately, uh, long enough for. Uh, a, a passing young man to come and help her down uh, from the saddle. And she says, thank you to him. And she pats him on the cheek. And if she takes your hand, you see that she has left two uh, dark, thin lines sort of, and a drop of blood uh, from the sharpness of her fingernails. He reaches it, touches it, and realizes he's bleeding, but doesn't seem to mind too much. Great. And she makes as she takes her horse and leads it into the stable. Great. And so every every dawn, uh, as the keeper, my job is to introduce a new threat. If we are currently have less than three active threats in play, threats uh, like mysteries in um, Brindlewood Bay are sort of the main way that play in this game is structured. They uh, present, and I'll kind of direct you over to the threats tab, uh, a set of questions to answer and clues that you'll build over time. Unlike other games that are sort of mystery oriented, threats don't have a um, cl- don't don't have a built in answer behind them. Um, instead, clues are the kind of main piecing mechanic. Once you get build up a certain number of clues, we'll be you'll be able to work together, uh, kind of workshop what you think the right answer to the threat is, and then we'll roll to see if that is, ends up being the actual answer. 
Uh, so the threat that I am bringing into play here is actually apropos to um, uh, Kozuku's, um, Kozuku. Uh, Kozuku, Kozuku, um, uh, desire to learn about family is the St. James Street Ghost. A back issue of the Illustrated Police News, a tabloid notorious for carrying a uh, salacious, okay, uh, for carrying salacious blood curdling tales of dubious provenance, has a story about a young maid, Jenny Hess, who was found dead, apparently from shock in her employer's St. James Street townhouse some months ago. The story claims the townhouse is haunted and that it was almost certainly the appearance of a ghost that caused the young maid to die of fright. After a cursory inquiry, you learn the precise address of the haunting, 18 St. James Street. Um, and the name of the family that lives there, the Beals. So uh, I think uh, Rory, you're someone that has experience with with hunt with with the hunt, and most tales of hauntings are complete nonsense, especially those carried by the Illustrated Police News. But Hargrave House has some experience with ghosts. And a particular detail in this story confirms that it is a legitimate haunting. What is it? I think um, I think it's the fact that um, when um when Ginny's uh body was found um there was a a description of a strange um sticky substance near it um which uh which um for, from the description is is clearly ectoplasm Cool. And so there are two uh, there are two sort of questions that are associated with this uh, mystery. One is optional and the other is required if you're going to solve this threat and uh, remove it as a, a something that is looming over London. I should note that a lot of the threats have advice that if uh, they aren't resolved eventually, I'm encouraged to sort of have them become worse the longer we're left out in the open. But there are the two questions are, which part of the house is the ghost attached to? This one will give you the opportunity to have access to a new move uh, in the game, which is uh, Old Bones. It basically lets you commune with a place and find and like speak to the ghosts of a location in the future if you manage to answer it. The other is uh, how can we get this ghost to pass on to the next world? And I should note one is complexity six, the other is complexity four. Uh, that's how that's basically when we're rolling the answer a question, you'll roll with the number of clues that you are devoting to that answer minus the complexity. So if you use six clues to answer the first question, um, you we'd be rolling a plus two because we'd subtract the four from it. But Rory, you you have stumbled upon this lead. I'm wondering how do you how do you introduce it to the rest of the house, uh, the rest of Hargrave House as a legitimate haunting? Oops, I am, uh, um, yes, yeah, so I think um, at uh, at some point uh, when um, people, uh, people gather, um, um, uh, it, He's just um, going to, yeah, um, toss the the 
the paper down on the um on the table and say uh, we never did uh, look at uh, St. James uh, Street Haunting, did we now? I uh, I found this this morning, and it was, uh, must have been left lying around. Um, I think it might have been a legitimate haunting, but I don't think we have a... Uh, I don't think it's the one that ever crossed our, uh, our paths before. Not to my knowledge, my dear. Well, then it can make manners on our path right now. I mean, uh, it does seem we've been a little quiet recently, so uh, um, we, may, we could always uh, take a look into it and see if there's anything to it. I mean, uh, maybe it's all sorted itself out by now anyway. No, oh, I don't think so. This one think, has, this uh, one so has a quite quiet. few. I think as this conversation is going on and we're around this table having a, a meal of some sort, just every now and then you'll see Talison's hand just nipping off an edge of like uh, rashers or something and just ducking down under the table for a, a nearby mouth as they're talking. <laughs> Don't, Talison. Hmm? Don't what? You may as uh, <laughs> come up on a chair, dear. Don't linger around under the table like uncivilized persons. Yeah. Um, and uh, Kazuku, uh, you're, you're talking to Kazuku. Yes, right? yes, and I'm gesturing to an empty well, chair well, next uh, to me. Uh, well, one of them, uh, I, I will leap onto the chair where there is already a, um, a, li a little bowl, like very, it's like a, uh, like a saucer. A sh sh saucer of like warm milk and I start to lap at it. Um, and I am also on Rory's lap and I start to purr. Um, I think, yeah, when, when Emily sort of makes that uh, comment, I think she'll get sort of a levacious grin from Talison. Some people prefer our company under our tables. Oh, I'll take you under the table anytime you want, dear. But perhaps this isn't the moment. You tease. All right, uh, Rory. So where and are we? She going? smiles, and she smiles. One of those smiles that seems to catch every bit of light in the room and reflect it back. Rory, please. Uh, more information about where we're going before I get distracted. Uh, eighteen St. James's Street. I don't know it myself, but um, that's not too far away from here. No, it's a plain enough neighborhood. You call uh, do you, I, I, I much it. prefer the. I much prefer Covered Garden. Duke Tallison, is this a hint of cardamom you've added to my milk? And you just get a smile, and he watches a small cardamom pod just sort of rolls across the table towards you. I am always appreciative of That's your like cardamom. This one does. This one's a very odd cat, I say, scratching it behind your ears. The best of cats. I didn't say that. I just said very odd. I, like I odd. said it. I, I like odd. And we see the camera, like, there's a, um, there's a, it's a, a, a glimpse to, like, the shadow of a, of a feline already approaching, like, Saint, uh, 18 St. James's Street. Uh, looking up at what it, it's in its perspective is a giant mansion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess I will then, uh, if if we are, if this cat is approaching St. James Street, it is a, well, from our perspective in the audience, a, it is one of the new townhouses of, of the merchant class bought in this part of the city to uh, show off their newfound wealth. This is not one of the bigger mansions like Hargrave House, but it's it's a solid two stories plus an attic space uh, with room to grow a family in. Kazuku, you're standing down at the at the base of this big of this great building in your view not as great as heartbreak house but 
what is what is your plan here? Oh, um, I'm just going to, I think I'm going to go round back and beg the chef, if possible, and just scratch at the door. Yeah, the, uh, the back door opens, and uh, let me see here. And just to make uh, this, this cat is a, is kind of like a, uh, like a sooty cat with uh, mm -hmm. eerie eyes. Um, and it has like one big tooth and it, it's going like, you know. Um, yeah, I'm kind of coming up a set of steps leading down into the basement of the dwelling is a square fit framed uh, woman that smells deliciously of onion and tobacco. She she is going, ah, what is this? What creature is making a racket out here near my kitchen? And she like looks down at you and there's a little bit of, of annoyance in her eyes. Is it you little, little bite? Wouldn't even feed you to the family dog. You're such a little runt. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try to have her just like, at least give me the space or like um, inside of her kitchen. And I'm just going to, I don't know. What is my angle? I, I... <laughs> is it just food? Is it just food? That just, I think as a cat, I, that just I, might be just it. Food, you know, I think I was just going to be as adorable as I possibly can. Um, okay, this sounds like a day move right here. A day move is what we make when things might become dangerous. Uh, what are you worried is going to happen here? Ah, uh, she's just got to close the door. <laughs> She'll slam it in my face, uh, but that's what I'm mostly concerned about. Uh, mm. Yeah, or get the shoe, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. This the is shoe. this definitely sounds like a presence role here. You're trying to be cute and adorable. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you mind if I use physical dice? Sure. Go ahead. Um. And so I do it with eyes and I try to rub up against her. Uh, and this is present, so it's negative one. Okay. <laughs> okay, that is a five. Yep. <laughs> yep. Start it. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I think that. She, she, she kind of crosses her arms at, e, at you and, and says, now don't give me that look, little one. I've, I've had, uh, I've had street urchins at this door in more need than you, and I gave them not. And she kind of uh like tosses she like slams the door in your face and i'm i'm gonna say you have the condition hungry okay i got it thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh but while and oh actually no i'm gonna say i'm going to say that there's a moment where she is about to close the door in your face then she stops, stares at you, and says in just a calm voice, get out. And then she kind of comes out and slams the door behind her, returning to her usual demeanor. Yeah, I turn tail uh, <laughs> utterly and, and, and run. I've seen where this goes before. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, but yeah, meanwhile, uh, we, we saw Kazaku's um, uh, failed mission for food. Uh, what, how, how, do you, how, how do the rest of you make your way to, um, to, to uh, St. James Street? Do you, do you come together or do you travel separately? I have a carriage. You all can come with me. Countess Annalise, well, that would be lovely. I think I might 
take a stroll by myself and see what's on the breeze. Though I do appreciate the offer and he will bend down and brush a kiss against her knuckles. I sir, you do make me blush. She says without blushing. Like, yeah, like, she's completely done. And he just sort of frowns, but then his lips tilt a little. I'd love to put something else red on your cheeks. But again, another time. And she, she reaches out a finger and taps you on the lips. And she says, hold, hold that horse for me, dear. You put your finger uh, on his mouth and he bites. Like, not like hard or anything, but just like teasing. Okay, then I'm going to, then, then I hook you behind the, I hook you behind the, the jaw. And I pull you to within an inch away from my face. And I say, don't do that unless you mean it, sweetheart. I mean everything. Let's you go. I mean everything I do, but uh, Rory hasn't paid for a show, so I shouldn't give him one. And I'm gonna go and grab my coat and hat and make my way out the door. Uh, well, my lady, seeing as you're uh, offering a ride in the old uh, carriage, I may as well uh, take you up on that. Um, By all and, means. Uh, Um, she uh, she allows you to help her mount up, mount the steps. Yeah. Um, and and, off, uh, off, and off we go. Yeah, um, he'll he'll sort of climb in climb in after and um, um, yeah, kind of. Um, Young, young gentlemen are hanging around the door again. I must discourage them. Who is that directed to? Oh, I that's directed to, uh, to Rory. I said, peering out the window, I say, oh, young gentlemen are hanging around the door again. I must discourage them. Mm -hmm. ah, I mean, I suppose you can do. I know, I know. It's it's uh, it's, it's like it's like brushing away the rats with a the broom. They just come back. But yes, you arrive at at the at the sixth street six, or is it eight? You arrive at St James Street, <laughs> and I forgot the number. <laughs> number eighteen. Thank yeah, you. 18, it's in the notes. Sorry. Uh, it's a plain enough place. This, yes, it is. This. She says of this rather nice place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, it would be quaint in the Countess's eyes. Plain, actually, I said. Plain. Not, not quaint. It's quaint would imply it had some history that it wasn't constructed yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, it has, it has some, it has some history. It has a haunting. So, oh, that's if that qualified you. <laughs> uh, because every 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 third abode in in Vienna would uh, do as much. Uh yes. Who 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 come who who comes to the door? Who who goes to to knock upon the door or make themselves known? Or is that or are you breaking in? I I I'm curious. What time is it? It is the day still. It this is, is this is midday. Um. Yeah. I I will. Um. Uh, I will head up the uh, um, steps to the door and uh, knock. I will uh, as well. I will, I will stand there <laughs> playing with my reticule. Yes, a, as, as you knock in a few moments, a lovely enough woman, but getting beginning to get show so shot signs of middle age probably in her early 30s uh greets you at the door she's wearing um a simple tartan dress and uh she kind of initially her eye is caught by uh rory she who she her eyes instantly go to the kilt that he is wearing and can i help you sir and and then she looks looks at you, Countess, and goes, "Oh, oh dear!" And, M Madame, I 
Well, I did you, not expect to have company at this time of day. You've heard that you have had an unfor. This is and this is this is a the the, the lady of the house from the looks of her. Yes, this yes. is this is Mrs. Beale. Mrs. Beale must be. We've heard that you have had a very unfortunate circumstance recently. I and my friend, I and my companions here have some experience in helping those with mm, unusual difficulties. Perhaps you might be so kind as to invite us in. You, you have, I, I think that she definitely stiffens up when, when you bring this up. You have ex experience, you say, in the sort of, in the sort but, of thing that took poor my Jenny's dear, life. My, my dear lady, are you really having this conversation on your front step? I... I say, looking at her with frank disbelief in my eyes. I, I, yes, yes. Rather than in your parlor? Of, I, of I, course, I, of course. Irma! Irma dear, and and uh, she calls. It is it, she is my cook. She has we have not had a replacement uh, made in some time, so she will have to do. Uh, but of course, I will lead you to our parlor, and and perhaps I shall see about uh, Irma serving you some something, serving us something uh, to eat. Perhaps some tea, some tea. Tea would be lovely. I do not know if um if you Scots also partake. Oh, I I never say no to a spot of tea, uh, uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Bale. Um, no, um, that would be uh, that would be lovely of you. Yes, my my husband will will be home shortly, and I'm certain I'm certain that he will want to speak to you about this as well. And she leads the two of you off into her parlor, and I'm curious. She she took immediate notice of, of Rory and the Countess. I'm wondering, do, do you follow the two of them to the parlor or are you uh, lingering in the, uh, the entry hall? Do Talison, are you there? Who was that referring? I think, I think okay, so for Talison. I think Talison's not there yet. Oh, oh, right, you were lingering outside? Yeah, he's sort of lingering outside, trying to get a vibe for what darkness he feels, mm. at least on the edges of the home, if there's something there or if it's purely contained inside the house. Mm-hmm. Sounds like an investigation. Uh, hmm? Sounds like an investigation. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, um what does what does it feel like as you tap into this because this is our first time we've seen you sort of drop touching uh the world unseen yeah so i think uh one of the things that Towson tends to wear is a ring that's on his pointer finger on his left hand He's a, a lefty and he presses against the bottom of it and it sort of shifts out a little and a small blade appears on the front and he just drags it across his thumb. And he's going to gently lean himself against a wall as if he's uh, having smoke uh, and just drag his thumb in between the uh, sort of nooks of the house or perhaps some poorly done sliding or the space between bricks is seen and draw oh. his blood into it yeah so out of curiosity here i'm not sure if this um it's been a while since i've looked at this move uh are, are you are you tapping into rites of salt and smoke, or do you think you're investigating here? Hmm. Let me look at the moves again real quick. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
a oh this is messy and gross and yeah uh i'm gonna do rites of salt and smoke okay what are you trying to do we're gonna find out if i succeed or not and then we'll see uh do we have a roller per se or uh, yeah i'll i'll copy that in if if it's a little bit ways up in the chat at this point. Oh, okay, I don't think I have it. I came in a little late. Thank you. So these are D6s, I believe, right? Two D6 and you add your sensitivity. That's a two. That is an 11. Oh, oh boy. you're not a, yeah, sorry, go, go for it. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I'm realizing more and more of this character as we start playing, and I do not think they are entirely the brightest. Um, <laughs> entirely what, sorry? Entirely the brightest, the brightest bulb. Uh, um, on a 10, so uh, when you give offerings to the dark entities that are always lingering in your periphery vision, roll with sensitivity on a 10 plus, the magic works without further cost. So I got an 11. And I'd like to banish a spirit or curse from the place it inhabits. Okay. Like this is an easy job. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work that way with these uh, with these threats, unfortunately. No, but yeah. It, I, it, yeah. <laughs> Not always the brightest bulb. I think that there is a hissing of smoke as from where the blood lies again where, from where you place the blood on the seams of the house and the air grows cold and chill around you I think that you you feel a hissing of a voice in your ear as it pulls around you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We couldn't get away from it, from them. Uh, darling, be a little more detailed. Who is it? Who is them and who are you? We were souls trapped here in its web. We don't have to keep it happy anymore. Is and I think as, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, and I think as he's like, he's like, is it the John, uh, what's looking for, we're looking for a John fellow, uh, Saint, oh no, uh, Saint James Street Ghost. Is that who you're talking about? We don't know its name. Now that we are away, it will get angry. And I think that's the moment when all the front windows of the house in front of you just crack, forming the shapes, forming a forming spiders webs patterns. Ooh. And that's a clue that you get here. But you freed you freed definitely some um imprisoned ghosts. Okay. And uh I think that this is definitely going to make what the whatever the big goat threat is haunting this house mad. Yes. But um, you can add to your personal quarters um, a ghost good wishes. Oh, cute! I love this. That's so sweet. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that was helpful at least. And then he's gonna turn around and start trudging up the stairs and make little faces every time he passes spider mm -hmm. windows yeah i think that as we as we kind of 
see that. Let's shift back inside to what is going on, not out front, but is here in, in like the parlor with Mrs. Beale. Um, in the, in this kind of, she like has taken you into sort of the dining room of the house. Um, it's one of the main rooms on the ground floor. And uh, there is a large, like, she, she has you sit at a large table, but it's clearly too big for all of you. Like, this is something that could easily fit eight, but, uh, and the three of you sat here are a bit awkwardly arranged around it, along with uh, a curio cabinet along one wall, um, as, as, and a serving trolley as well, that the chef brought in a few scones and some tea upon. And I, I want to, I want to ask, uh, uh, Countess, uh, Annalise here, does Mrs. Beale have splendid taste or rather disappointing taste? What do you see that confirms this? Mrs. Beale has uh, the tastes of someone who, um, whose money has outpaced her, uh, you know, her understanding of culture. This is altogether, unfortunately, too common in the in the mercantile class these days. So uh, there are the thing the uh, there are um, uh, hangings here which are. Uh, uh, which are, are expensive, uh, but clash uh, with each other. So fine curtains and a beautiful uh, Indian rug um, and uh, uh, rich upholstery and the, and the chairs and such like that. And it's, it's all a bit too much. If she had spent half as much in this room, it would be much more elegant. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Beale is, stir is stirring her tea excitedly, uh, nibbling at her scone. Dear, so I, it is ever so terrible what has happened to dear, uh, to, to dear, Ginny. Yeah, Ginny. So sorry, my I, I I have so many tabs open. I need to. Uh, dear I Ginny, that was character. I apologize. Yes. What's her name? Yes, dear Ginny. I I have lost. I have not been able to sleep well in this house, knowing that there is something here, something that does not mean us well. I reach across the table and I take your hand delicately in mine. I look you in the eyes and I say, tell us about it, my dear. What happened? There is nothing you can say that will be embarrassing in this instance. Oh yes, this is definitely an information move here with presence, right? It absolutely is. Cool, that's a 10. So you get your clue. But here's the thing I'm going to throw out to you because, of course, I, I always should. Would you like to mark a mask to bump that up into a 12 plus and also get a uh, mastermind clue? Not yet. But okay. You. Cool. So she, she looks about the room and I, my husband was so, so very happy to purchase this place at a song for what it should be worth, but 
well, I always knew that there must be something beyond what something beyond what what mu what must uh, beyond that must have made it uh, so cheap. And there was a similar death in this place. A woman, a maid, similarly died in a state of shock, as if by some fierce, as if by some fearsome force had come upon her. I, I just do not know how we can continue here. Who was this other maid? Rintel, what do you know about her? I, I know nothing about the maid. Her, they, there was never any recording of her name, and, but she, she, she goes over to the curio cabinet and pulls out a small album. Uh, but here, I see, and, and she pulls out a bit of news clipping, um, much older, that describes a very similar situation to the one Ginny was in, definitely. This was some 20 years prior. Twenty years. No, oh, extraordinary. And uh, where did poor Ginny die? Where was she found? She was upstairs, cleaning cleaning the the bedrooms, and I think as Countess has that conversation. I'm wondering, what are you up to, Rory? I think um, once um, once uh, Mrs. Bill has started talking to uh, Annalise, um, uh, Rory will have just kind of stood up um, and will just kind of be walking around, um, walking around the room, kind of peering at the um at the curios and uh um not not kind of interfering with anything at the minute and probably will just stay in this this room still at the moment but um yeah just kind of scoping the place out cool are you looking for anything in particular or are you just getting a general feel of the place um I think um, just looking for anything that kind of stands out or that 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 um, jars him as strange. Mm -hmm. Give me give me a roll with reason here for the information move. Sure thing. <laughs> and that's a three. Nice. Cool. I think as you are glaring that looking down through these curios in the cabinet, this is this is and I'm gonna say if you want to mark this up. A, uh, there is, you catch a glimpse of, uh, a smoke, of smoke, where that shouldn't be, uh, kind of hazing the sheen of a silver, uh, serving dish. And then there is a lurch, and the curio collapses onto you. Uh, would you, you, you can take the condition broken collarbone? Uh, unless you want to mark a, uh, 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 um, uh, a mass to bump that up to a partial. 
yeah, I think I am going to mark, uh, mark a mask of the past for that. Cool. And this is something, uh, Kay, that this is one of the mechanics we have in the game. You have these masks, masks of the future and masks of the past, that let you bump up uh, the, the role by one level. So from a miss to a partial, from a partial to a full hit, from a full hit to like the bonus effect. Okay. Um, and usually each of them have things attached to them. The, ma the mass of the past ask us to um, reveal something about your character's past. There are a series of prompts. Mass of the future uh, sort of foretell the dark fate awaiting your character. As long as you have no masks of the future marked, you're allowed to retire your character whenever you want. Once you have a mask of the future marked, the only retirement your character can have is death. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay, very cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think that instead, uh, what happens is that as you are looking through these curios, uh, there is like this very intricate glass figurine of a tiger that just spontaneously falls from the shelf. And like it not even falls, it almost is like someone knocked it from the shelf and shatters at your feet. And Mrs. Beale stands up and I think this is almost simultaneous with the with the uh, windows outside because you hear that loud cracking as well. And Miss Beale says, "Oh dear, what happened there? I I did like this piece." As she tisks and tries to pick up the pieces, her hand gets cut slightly, and blood runs over the the uh, the tie over over the glass tiger. And I think that you can take the the condition um, um, ill at ease. Cool. Um, and uh, um, I think I will. Um, uh, I think I will uh, say, oh, no, um, you don't need to do that, uh, Mrs. B. Or please allow me and. Um, he'll go uh, uh, to gather sort of some of the, the the broken glass as well, um, and he'll say, "Ah, no, look, you've cut yourself there," um, and he'll just um, kind of without um, without even thinking, will just take um, the, the the where she's cut her thumb and just suck um, the, uh, the the blood uh, off of it and kind of lick the wound. Oh yes, she she goes bright red when you do this. I, Mr. McClellan, I, I am certain that you meant, she like snatches her hand away and says, Mr. McClellan, I am certain that you meant n nothing but the purest intent by that. But you, I am a married woman. What does I her think... blood taste like? Um, <laughs> it's, it's obviously, um, it's obviously like, um, um, you know, coppery um mm -hmm. salty but but it just it tastes a little thin i think just mm -hmm. uh, you know um may, 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 maybe she's uh, not getting enough iron <laughs> but duke talison you you were going to say something i think like in that moment we have like, the shattering and then the sputtering is when they hear like a very like thick knock against the door oh dear I, is this is this a companion of yours? Yes, I believe so. And as she goes to the door, uh, yeah, she opens she opens it to you, Duke Tallison. I assume that's who it was. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, think. Oh, go ahead. Oh, if there was a, a scraggly feline around, he would have picked it I up. I was about to say, it does a cat mean uh, oh, yeah. profit I was from the door being to open briefly, to come through? I was going to briefly uh, shift over to Kazuku. So okay. if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think there there is one cat there. Like, a, you know, just a, 
uh, I would say it's it's a, it's a it's a small savanna cat with like a tiny top hat. But um, we flash over flash to the rooftop of uh, a, what what is Saint James Street, mm -hmm. and there's like a there's a small little um, in it like almost an attic space, right? I'm trying to look in, and there's like a little latch that I'm trying to get open, and it's like locked from the inside. Um, and you see it's it's a, a chunky like pumpkin shaped nebulong with an underbite and it's just like fiddling with the lock trying to get in uh from the top of the building um uh yeah and yeah i think that you totally can do this i think yeah. below there is this is the attic space Below, there is a crib with a squealing little baby in it that is giggling as it sees you crawling in, as well as a greyhound that is like, like with tail uh, stiff, like keeping yeah. an eye on you as you climb down into this attic space. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you here, uh, how do you know, like, as you climb down here, this attic is has been set up as a nursery for this baby, uh, set out in, decorated in soft pastel colors, but there's an unease here. How do you know that the ghost is here with you right now as you enter? Oh, gosh. Well, I know that the ghost is with me right now because suddenly the dog starts to act quite unnaturally. Um, and like its eyes turn black, it starts to look at me and starts to prowl toward me in a very menacing <laughs> manner. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and I actually think that on that note, we're going to take a five minute break and start in our night phase. The between is sort of a very structured game like the day phase is a little bit more open, a little bit more player directed. Um, things like I, I generally will follow your lead and let things uh, continue and, and like uh, see where you go. Uh, but once we sort of enter the night phase, things become more dangerous. Rather than making the day move, we make the night move, which is anytime uh, you say it, you, you're afraid what, what is going to happen, and then I will tell you how it's worse. Uh, I will also generally uh, kind of have more leeway to kind of aggressively frame situations uh, for the group. And uh, so, before we enter the night phase, though, we have a brief period called the dusk phase. And uh, whenever we do the dusk phase, we uh, do a paint the scene of one of the rooms in Hargrave House. So this time, I think, uh, let's see, I have it here. I think I will pull in the... Uh... No, that one actually doesn't work that well. Uh, we'll do the conservatory. Oh, thank you, Ben. Um, so in that case, uh, the room I'm looking at is the conservatory. A former hunter in residence turned out to be the legendary killer, Roger the Reaver. This was his favorite room in Hargrave House. Looking around, how do you know that? And I'll go by character keeper order this time. Countess Am Annalise, how do you know that this was the favorite room of Roger the Reaver in the past? Um, uh, there... I think um, I think there is something uh, that was so unsubtle as to blatantly ask for comment, which is to say, 
that there is a, a frame, there's a framed set of uh, clippings with lurid newspaper headlines about the reaver killings. Mm -hmm. And he would add to them as they took place. Great. As if daring anyone to voice the possibility. Duke Callison, how do we know that this was the favor room of Roger the Reaver? I think there is an old fashioned hung quilt uh, or a tapestry, but between the weavings, there are unmarked, like barely marked blocks of hair that are sort of just sort of swathed into it that one might mistake for like a, a familial line sort of cuttings that one might do. Uh, but if you look at the dates that are very tightly, neatly, smallly written there, they're too close together to possibly be continuous birthdays. And they are actually locks of hair taken from each of his victims on the day of their demise. Cool, Rory. What? Uh, what? 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 Evan, how do you know that this is the favorite room of Roger the Reaver? Um, I think there is um, kind of a almost like a um, um, a mosaic worked into the um, into sort of the paths between um, some of the flower beds in here. Um, yeah, fair, just a sort of fairly simple um, geometric design um, worked in um, what well, was presumably some kind of, um, you know, off-white pebbles, we shall assume. Cool. And finally, Kazuku, what uh yeah well so uh there is a bookcase it's kind of a grand bookcase that i was pilfering through perusing one day and pulling one book the bookcase like it like unhinged itself and pulled aside right and of course i'm a curious cat myself and so i scamper down and climb my way into this like very narrow staircase that leads into what seems like a laboratory, right? It's a cold um, uh, dank space almost with lots of equipment. And I look up into the rafters and I see, feel like I'm in a, the storybook of Bluebeard's Bride all of a sudden. And I, I stare around and everything hanging there, all of them. And then I just slowly make my way up the steps again and shut the door as best I can. And uh, well, the, the, the library door. And I make my way out, my, my hair fully on end. Yeah, man, a lot flew under the radar at this place. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. So the other thing we kind of do when they're in the dusk phase is I'm gonna go around and ask each of you what you're hoping to accomplish during the night phase, what you're hoping to do. Um, each of you can uh, answer and I'll go around one more time to see if anyone wants to revise their answer uh, once and then, and then we'll go into the night phase. So we'll start again on you, uh, Countess Annalise. What do you want to do during this night phase? Um, well, we only have the one thread uh, yeah. to uh, to look at. Um, but uh, I would like to, um, I would like to try to talk to the ghost. Um, I'm planning, I think, from the ghost is haunting the townhouse, but the townhouse has a garden, and I'd rather be out in the dark. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'm going to, uh, to bring a candle, uh, which is um, a kind of odd thing because it is, um, I, I light it, but it doesn't actually seem to give much light. It seems you can see the flame flicker and barely make out the rest of it. But it seems a very, very poor um, thing for what a candle is primarily intended to do, which is to you know illuminate the surroundings. But of course, this candle is not meant to do that. This candle is meant to attract things that are attracted to such things. And to clarify, where, where are you taking this candle? Um, I think I'll take it. Uh, the, the bills are not likely to be, uh, to desire to have people. I mean, if they are, if they are willing, I'll do it uh, in their home. Um, I think that they are desperate enough that you could manage to do it in their home. Right. Well, then uh, I will do it there um, in the upstairs where the, the young lady was frightened to death. Cool. There's no other light there. If someone else would like to be there, I'd be perfectly happy cool. to do that. Um, My, the, uh, to, to answer, Kazuko, the, my answer to the Hargrave House Room prompt was that there are lurid new newspaper clippings about the Reaver killings in a, in a, a tasteful frame. Mm -hmm. um, so I, uh, tell you, Sindir. Well, hang on. We're we're gonna get everyone, and then we'll we'll play out the scenes. I don't want to. This is this no. Is just I'm, kind of. Oh, go ahead. I was asking him whether he would like to accompany me. Okay. Uh, yes, Talison is more than happy to accompany you. Ghosts are a little more in your bailiwick than mine. Yes, although he would oh. uh, have a message for Rory. And I think if uh, Kazuko allowed, if that, that Bengal cat had been, uh, or sorry, Savannah cat, I believe, uh, was near him, he would have lifted it up to bring it in because as if it was his so that it wouldn't like, you know, not get taken into the house. Yes. Thank you very much. Cool. You see my tail flipping in a very pleased manner. <laughs> You're so kind. You're so kind to stray animals, Talisons. Oh, this is this is no stray. This is a regal it's... being, and I'm just scratching under its chin. Oh, I don't know. It looks like any 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 alley cat that you might. Where's a top another... hat? <laughs> he, and I like it's like in the most astounded voice. Just he wears a top hat. <laughs> the cat. It's uh... true. Maybe we should get him a little cane. Rory, uh, what what are you planning on doing tonight? Um, I think um, just kind of roaming around the house in general. Um, uh, I think, yeah, just just sort of um, uh, exploring the house, um, sort of in, in its entirety, and seeing seeing what he sees. Really, um, cool. And uh, Kazuku, what are you? Yeah, I'm going to go kill our neighbor's father. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. At least one of my cats will. Um, yeah, there is also the dog, though. So we'll see about Oh, that. you're right. You're fra Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think that <laughs> might be the more pressing concern. I mean, you could you could say that's what you want to do. But remember, I get it. to frame I know, it. it's true. <laughs> you have the night. Yes. So I think that where we will open well where we'll open things then is as we open any night phase is with the uh is by introducing to not the night's um uh unseen the unseen is a little bit of another thing that's kind of different about this game uh the unseen is a sort of it is painting the life and character of our particular victorian london 
Um, it is it is basically something that uh, is happening, but has no actual like direct relationship to the plot that is going on. It it, it helps us flush out the feeling of the world. And uh, in particular, I'll, I'll direct you over to this, K. One of our questions is, did you have an echo in the night? Basically, this means that I'm gonna be going around the table over the course of the night phase, asking people prompts from the unseen for the night. Um, that, and basically, if you either have something in the unseen question I ask you, reflect something happening, in the fiction of the world. And this could be just a minor thing that the red of the curtains is the same as the red of the blood pooling on the ground of this creature I shot, for example. Um, or that glint in the eye is the same predatory glint in Rory that, that Rory shows as he fires the gun. Um, it could similarly be something that you that that you see that you make that that parallels something happening in the unseen. If you have at least one of those echoes in the night, you'll get an XP at during the dawn phase. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So the uh the unseen that I am introducing here, and how do I? Oh, there's the zoom here. Is the attic at Gransby House. Uh, which is row 51, column E. It is like actually the very last one, if you could scroll all the way to the bottom. Gransby House uh, is a fine mansion in Mayfair, but above the grand rooms is a cramped series of attic rooms that is the beating heart of the house, the maid's quarters. Alternating between too hot and too cold, lit only by candlelight, this is the girl's only refuge from their life of service. With shifts, with shifts that, uh, I think there's a typo here, but with shifts that last to bed and the first to awake, there are a scant few hours of silence um, every night. So the first is a paint the scene question that I'll throw around to all of you. The attic quarters are cramped with whitewashed wooden partition walls separating the girls into rooms of four or so occupants. What touches of the girls' personalities do we see added to their personal spaces? Uh, Kazuku, I'll ask you first. Uh, yeah, so um, we see a, um, a little, uh, what is it called, a drawing in, in watercolor of one of the girl's like most cherished pups. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, uh, almost a red tinged, um, like uh, uh, golden, uh, but that's too American, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like a red fur, reddish fur dog, um, a ginger dog. Um, and it has like a nice, like almost a grin. It's smiling at her, how she drew it. And she's just like, sighing to the pup that she can never have. <laughs> yeah. What's another detail, Rory? Oh, good. I'm from you. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I think we see um, uh, one of the um, one of the girls has been collecting um um like articles from um from um a newspaper um they're all kind of like um you know society uh society weddings and um uh and uh, and, and things like that um uh, all these 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 stories of kind of um uh love and extravagance um cool. and duke Tallison, what what other uh uh 
a bit of the girls' personalities do we see added to their personal spaces? I think as we glance amongst the bed, I think behind one of the pillows, we see a glint as the last bits of light sort of fade out of the window of the sky, where it seems one of the maids has a penchant for taking things from guests. And there's a bracelet. And in it, we see uh, amber set stones that just absolutely look resplendent as that last bit of light shines upon them, uh, you know, giving a glimpse of a hidden hoard. Cool. And finally, Countess Annalise, what uh, uh, bit touch of the girls' personalities do you see added to their spaces? Oh, you're muted, Brandon. Um, uh, uh, on, a, on a tiny bedside uh, table perched by uh, one of the beds is rests um, a very much weather beaten, uh, uh, tiny stuffed giraffe. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's colors and uh, it's missing one, missing one of its button eyes and it's, it's colors very much faded. So yes, we open as upon this light, we kind of shift from the poorly lit attic to this flickering light that doesn't seem to be bright enough from Countess and Elise as you walk through the upper floor of this townhouse as the day dims into night. As, as you walk past each of the rooms for Harold, for Alice, for their son, Roger, what about these rooms unnerves you? Actually, you, you answered one earlier. So is it all right if I throw this over to Duke Tallison, who is with you? Sure, can you just iterate that again? As you walk past each of the bedrooms, Mm -hmm. uh, as you make your round of the upper floor uh, with, with Countess Annalise. Uh, what, what about these rooms uh, disturbs you? Oh, real quick, there was, so uh, if we're getting into play, there was something I was going to do in the, in the entryway before we started, before we sort of separated. Is that okay to do or are we just moving past? Uh, it depends on how much time it's gonna take because- It'll we, be real quick. Okay, sure. So I think as he sort of, uh, he, he had gone over to Rory, who was sitting on the couch. He'd already placed uh, our lovely Kazuku down. And he leaned in and whispered, the spirit's going to be very angry. I've freed whatever it held in its clutches, the supposed innocence and also. And he'll lean down and place like the softest of kisses at the edge corner of Rory's mouth but the tongue will flick and it'll be like, I don't like it when you taste of others. And we'll just pull back in, in a way. And then, you know, we get the, the sort of walk okay. away. But it's right. clear he can sort of, you know, there's like a, a small bit of blood right out the corner of Rory's mm -hmm. mouth. And, yeah. Great. Um, but yeah. Uh, so how, what about these bedrooms, these upstairs rooms disturbs you as you are walking the hall? And you said it was the room of Richard there, one of their young children. Yeah, they're, they're on this room, there are bedrooms for Harold, Alice, as well as uh, Roger, their son. Oh, they're Roger, their son. So I think what both- And one, uh, a spare room oh, for guests. A spare room for guests. I think he sort of peeks into Roger's room and it's sort of, he doesn't let the shock go amongst his own face, but uh, it brings up a memory of his own youth. As he sees, that there appear to be manacles at the uh, front of the headboard of Roger's bed. Small, yes. a man's wrists would never fit. Mm -hmm. And well, hang on, I wanna check in. Is that okay for folks oh. to have in the fiction? I just wanna make certain. Yes. Cool, okay. Um, 
So I think definitely Countess, as you peer, as you see Duke peering into Roger's bedroom, there is a figure that looks strikingly like yourself standing over the bed, staring down at Roger's sleeping face. You are muted, sorry. Well, hello, darling. The figure looks up at you, and what is the sign that this is the ghost and not just your reflection? I, my room at home, is full of mirrors, as anyone knows has been in it. Large ones, small ones. I know my reflection exquisitely well. And the, the ghost is just like me, but it's It's lacking any, the, the, the Countess, even at her worst, is full of warmth, full of life, powerful. You can see it. It's one of the reasons that she is as attractive as she is. People want to be around someone who is so alive. This ghost has without any difference in the current complexion has the life has had the life taken out of it. Mm -hmm. There is a coldness in the eye. There is a, a dullness in its aspect that says it is all but given up. Mm -hmm. She holds her arms open to you as if for an embrace. I smile. And I say, You poor dear, have you so lost your aspect that you have to take another's? Mm. Come here, Toru, come here and let me see you better. You needn't be afraid. What are you afraid is going to happen here, Countess? Oh, the small afraid, since I know there's a smaller one and a bigger one. The small afraid is I'm afraid the ghost will flee. I think the big afraid is that the ghost will take your body as its own. Mm -hmm. And leave you behind here instead. Do you still oh, go yes. through with this? Give oh, me a yes. roll with do you say sensitivity or presence here? Presence, I think. Okay. Um, the, uh, do you think this is about my physical appearance? It certainly has taken on my physical appearance. Mm, sure, yeah, you can give a roll with, with sure. Give me a roll with advantage here. I mean, I thought enough of my physical appearance to uh, take its aspect. Oh, a 12. Wow. Okay, so I think before while we while we see what is going to happen there. Um Rory. 
a group of girls gather in one room, gossiping in hushed tones about potential beaux, fellow servants, boys from back home, or even a member of the household. Who dreams of a true of true love or desire? Who of escape from service by marriage? And who remains notably quiet on the subject? And you're gonna mute it just just in case you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think um, there's um, one of the girls is um, is actually the um, the the owner of those newspaper clippings that we saw, um, and she is. Um, gushing about the um, idea of um, marrying uh, marrying her true love. Uh, not that she has one yet, but when she has one. And, um, you know, um, uh, living in, um, uh, in, in happiness and uh, uh, happy ever after and all that. Um, but I think we see as she is um as she is is kind of um gushing one of the other uh ladies a slightly older maid um um perhaps um approaching her thirties um whilst this is going on um we see her um uh, essentially she has um a um a book um you know um maybe even a um a bible that she's um uh, that she's kind of um got open but we see sort of over her shoulder um that she is um she has kind of um foot folded up inside it's sort of essentially the um the the lonely hearts column um from the newspaper and is kind of writing out letters to these um you know sort of eligible men in a desperate attempt to find um uh, a way out of here and um i think um lastly um we see um uh, two of the girls um who um as um as uh, the the uh, uh the the um the girl has been talking about uh, about her you know dream wedding and all of this um and as they as she's talking about um finding her true love um we see the two of them linking hands um underneath the blankets cool and as you said uh rory you were prowling the rest of the house uh seeing what you could find and I think that there is a creaking from under your feet that leads you uh, to a small, uh, like a small entryway. It's the kind of service entry that would be used to move in between uh, the two, uh, between like the ground, the ground, the uh, the ground floor floor and the first floor, and. As you are, as you go downstairs, there I want to. You come upon the basement, which contains the kitchen and servants' quarters. What evidence, evidence do you see that shows how historically the servants of 18 James Street have protected themselves from the ghost? Um, I think that just in the um upper corners of all of the um, um of all of the um doorways down here um we just see a couple of fragments of um broken mirror um like up in the corners of the doorway pointed at each other to create almost that like um 
you know infinity mirror thing though obviously the, the the shards are small enough that you don't you can't really like look at yourself in them but just, there's just that like little bit of reflected light out of the corner of your eye as you go through them mm -hmm. and there's a creaking a footstep still you can hear it echoing through the basement what do you do um i'm uh I'm going to walk towards where I can hear the um uh the 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 footsteps coming from um and we'll just like kind of call out a a, a greeting mm -hmm. give me a investigate role here with composure Uh, so 10. Cool. You hear, as you call out, the creaking stops for a moment. And then there is the set, you get the sense of like a, a feet upon feet moving around, along creaking floorboards as if like running away from your voice into uh, the storage pantry. And I think in there, you find buried under a pile of old, of, of like half molded potatoes is, let's see here. A, It looks like a, a ledger book that somebody has tried to hide away. Flipping through it, there are a few strange things that aren't immediately explicable. Thaw casting, dream whisperer, pig gifts. Yeah, I think... Um... Rory will kind of look over it in, with some confusion um, and uh, sip it, um, uh, sip it inside his, uh, well, inside his spur and actually his little um, pouch that he has uh, uh, there. And um, um, yeah, then, then carry on his way, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, uh, just to check in, are folks okay if we run a few minutes long to wrap up the night phase? And then like, I think like a 10, 15 minutes should be enough. But I want to check in with folks. Cool. Uh, but yeah, Kazuku, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, Shona Muir, one of the chambermaids, is just about to unpin her cap when the servant's bell rings. What last domestic duties is she called to attend to by members of the household as the house settles down for the night? Yeah, um, she's going to assist her lady um, uh, uh, who is going through um, problems with, uh, what is it called, her period. Um, and she's going to assist with cramping and cleaning up. We don't say words like that. I apologize. Uh, with with the, the, the a lady's time. Yes, there we uh, go. And uh, her, dif the dif her difficulty. And to clean up any any red she might find. Cool. And we come return to as the sun sets. This dog with a dark look in its eyes pacing around where you are perched on top of a cabinet stacked with plush children's toys. The sort of the sort of toys that any child would dream of playing with on the street. Soft and shaggy, soft and plush like your plump little body. Yeah. What do you do? Well, I want to protect the child. Um, 
So I'm going to position it myself in front of the child, but I know from the, the time, my many kills that an offense is a better defense. So I'm going to use, I'm gonna mark my big bearskin rug, for my finest kill, remembering the time that I took down that beast. Um, it was in the savannah. Um, wait, no, it wasn't. Uh, where was it? Are there, are there bears in, in uh, the UK, David? Not, not at this time, but there yeah. were historically, yeah. Yes. Um, well, I do, one of my folks is a Canadian lynx. Uh, so it was one of the times that I did take down a, a grizzly, uh, it was quite grizzly, grizzly, um, uh, the kill it was um, in Canada. And the, th the thing about bears is you need to go for it where they're sensitive. It's right in the eyes. So that's what I'm going to go aim for this, this dog, whatever it may be. Um, and it might be a, a fitting first memory for a child, who knows? Uh, he's gonna be protected in any case. That's what I care about. Uh, so I'm going to roll 3d6. Um, uh, and uh, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, what I'm attempting to do yeah. is, uh, is to um, physically destroy the dog and okay. rend it up bloody. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is a night move. So what are you afraid is going to happen? Yeah, um, so what I'm afraid is going to happen is it's going to devour me. Um, and not only be kind to me, uh, and, but to the, the, the child as well. Mm. Yeah, I think what's worse is that it will devour you in a sense. It will take this cat as a vessel and it will realize that this cat is already such a perfect vessel for consciousness yeah maybe it should come for the rest of you as well thank you um so uh what am i rolling with uh you're rolling with vitality here definitely I have vitality um right for the eyes got the bearskin rug what is my vitality i think it is a plus one okay okay um that is a seven plus one and eight mm. and i would like to mark the mask of uh the unquiet if we haven't already yeah so the, we'll 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 take care of that i think at the end at maybe next session next because time we're running okay. long yeah but as the so yeah describe for us because you were doing you were this is like a full hit at this point. You are doing well here. How do you yeah. fight off this dog? They say that kids, can, uh, cats can't fight. That's not true. Um, I think what I do is I use what is around me as the dog, you know, chases me and it's very uncanny. It like climbs upon the ceiling as well. It is, it is, um, we just get flashes, right? And like the frame just captures pictures of this dog like leaping from the ceiling directly at me. And I'm using decoys of the of the, uh, the various toys that are around, um, and just when it it like it looks underneath the bassinet, um, or, or what it what where wherever the child is, I just leap out and I claw out its eyes, and I I just go all in, like completely destroying this dog and. Um, trying to remove the spirit but with the the physical pain of the creature um because i feel like the spirit is not as um agile as it would be in a human form it is not used to the form of an animal cool yeah and it just the scene turns red yeah you do this and i think as you are triumphant over this creature you look up at the big full-length mirror that is propped in one, that is standing in one side of the room. 
and there is a woman there inspecting you, a woman of strange demeanor with a cat-like gleam in her eye. And there's a moment where like recognizes like, and then she's gone. And that is the first mastermind clue I'm throwing out here, a glimpse of Titania. Yeah, it takes my, I think at this moment, I smell catnip and I <laughs> walk over to the mirror and just purr, brushing up against cool. it. Yeah. And Duke Tallison, Kitty Saxton and Daisy Warren share a room with a couple of other girls. When all is quiet, Kitty sneaks into Daisy's bed. What comfort do they share with one another? Do the other uh, do the other girls, aware of what is going on, maintain a discreet silence or gently rib them? I think they share a longing for the countryside. And as they cluster together in this bed that is far too small, Kitty hums a soft tune, only known to peasants for it's considered too base for anyone who is of status to know. And I think most of the other girls rip them about this as they hold close to each other in their beds that they are too old for such nursery rhymes and frivolities and should think more about their future here in the city. Uh, but to them, it is the last clutch vestiges of girlhood snatched away far too soon. Cool. So yes, returning to that moment we left uh, the Countess on, I think that you are seized by a moment, Countess, a vision as you touch and reach out to them of an intense violence being locked in in a struggle with someone and then pain pain that goes on and on and then ends and you get a feeling a certainty in the back of your head as if something is not quite speaking to you but making itself known give me something of the sense of mortality of flesh of fleshy things through you and you can be rewarded. I'll give you the most precious thing I have. And, and I you can, kiss, and I kiss you. Mm -hmm. And you can feel as you kiss it that just for a moment, it's entering you and is filling you and it can feel all that you feel. And I think Duke Tallison, this is the moment. You have not seen the spirit yourself, but you can feel that Countess Annalise is being filled with this spirit now. What do you do? Oh, I think I see this and I reach out and grasp upon the Countess's wrist and whisper into it. If you are lonely, right now, do not take that blame out on my compatriot, for it is I who have stolen away those you held dear. Countess Annalise, you had made a deal with this, so it is not taking away your agency, but it does want to know fleshy things again, just briefly. What do you do? I um, I take Talison's hand and I hold it to my cheek. I smell his scent. And I rub it, rub the, the, the skin of his uh, hand against my face. 
I look into his eyes and see myself reflected there. And I allow my heart to remember what it was like to be in love so very long ago. I think Talison lets you do that, but as he sort of does it, he he looks in the reflection in the amber stone he wears on his neck, glints, and he sees not simply just you in the reflected surface, but a duplicate as this spirit hovers over you, unaware of the deal you've made. And concern starts to mar his handsome features. No, 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 no dear, no dear. I'm, I'm letting it feel, I'm letting it see and smell and be. It's been hollow for so long that it's tried to take the life of others to fill that void. I'm just letting it drink in a little bit of life so it can remember what it was like. Not as wispy, evanescent, three times forgotten, Memories, but there's something of the moments now here. That's not a whim you should indulge now or ever again. Countess Annalise von Thorn, to be a vessel I is am... not something all are cut out for, nor is it a life you wish to fall into. Nor am I. But I have a weakness for the dying and the dead, you should know that. If you continue to let yourself fall prey to those moments, you will become one of them. And I think he sort of pulls his hand away from your cheek. It may even uh, nick across said place as this ghost maybe it feels a sensation of uh, pain and the tang of copper in its nostrils as he had forgotten to put his ring back into place. Oh, that's good, says the Countess. And she draws her fingernails across her own cheeks and leaves marks on both of those flawless surfaces. Mm -hmm. There, she says, this is life. Cool. And I'm going to ask, uh, could someone volunteer a bauble of a bygone era that Countess Annalise finds on her bed on on her uh, bed's pillow the next morning? I think a an old uh, King's King James Bible, mm -hmm. but there are love notes throughout all the passages. Yeah, you can add that to your personal quarters, Countess Annalise. And with that, I think we close the night phase and the session. But there's one last thing we see. Just as the just after you know the credits for our uh, series uh, roles, we see that same woman uh, in with stringy white hair clad in once fine, but now tattered clothes, rail thin with pale unblemished skin that shows no mark of age. 
She is standing amidst a ruined manor house, surrounded by crumbling bits of marble and statues and columns. As we see human, as we see servants in the shadows around her, she has her finger above a pool where she briefly glimpses a cat. And we hear her whisper to herself over and over the same two words, Hargrave House. And then the cat, the shot closes. And that's the end of our session, folks. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for playing. I had a whole lot of fun today. Um, I'm gonna take us off air now to do some stars and wishes if folks have time. But bye everyone. Thanks so much for uh thanks so much for for watching and playing with me.